Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 34 on learning to program the most excellent Arduino microcontroller. What I need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of coffee and get ready to learn a little bit more about functions. Okay, what we're going to learn today is how to return a variable value from a function. Okay, this series of lessons really started in lesson number 32 where I showed you how to start using functions in Arduino and the idea behind a function is to take a complicated task and break it down into logical chunks and then to define code or functions to do those logical blocks and then your main program is much easier. You just call these blocks and execute them and you can start doing things in a more modular fashion. But once you start doing that, you have to start being very mindful of the difference between global variables and local variables. So one way you can do it is just make everything a global variable. All the functions know what all the variables are and do it that way. But what we showed in lesson number 33 is, is that as we start doing more sophisticated programming, we really need to start using local variables where the variables are local to the individual functions and we pass values back and forth. And so what we're going to look at today is we're going to start looking at our first look at using local variables and how we can pass a value back from a function up to the main void loop. So if you haven't watched lesson number 32, I really suggest that you kind of get up to speed on what we were do doing there. And what you can do is you can go back to what we did in lesson number 32. I will first get out of your way and then I will go here. <clears throat> and this is uh, the program that we wrote on lesson number 32. If you don't have this code, if you don't have this code, you can go back to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. Go to Arduino lessons. Go to Arduino lesson number 32, and I have the code there for you to use. But what this code is, it's to average grades. And just a quick recap of what we did. We defined all of our variables to be global variables up here. And then we de defined in our loop functions, or we called functions that were logical blocks of how you would average grades. So if you wanted to average a list of grades, what's the first thing you would need to do? Well, you would need to input the grades. And then what would you need to do? You would need to average the grades. And then what would you need to do? You would print the grades. Okay, so this is very logical. Input grades, average grades, print grades. And that is your void loop. Then you come down here and you define these void functions of input grades. And then you define the function average grades, and then you define the function print grades. So you see all of a sudden this starts looking really cool, really modular. But the way we did this is we did this with global variables. That means we define the variables up here, and all of the functions knew what all of the variables were. But we're going to start moving into local variables. All right. And so let's think about that. Let's think about what we're really going to do is we're going to make average a local variable. And so we're not going to define it up there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to define it down here. So I'm going to say float. And I'm going to define average. And now, who's the only one that's going to know what AV is? The only one that's going to know what AV is is between this curly bracket and that curly bracket because AV is local only to this. And I'm just going to take that one out. And then what I'm going to do here is just say, after I calculate average, I'm going to do a serial.println, and then I'm going to say, or make it a print, say, your average is, and then I'm going to do a serial.println, and I'm going to say AV. Okay. So this print statement will be happy because AV is inside, it's defined inside this clause, inside this void loop. And so it's a local variable, but this print statement is part of the same chunk of code where I define it. So this should work very well. But now what we're going to do is instead of just calling av grades like this, what we're going to do is we're going to say that av is equal to 
the function. Well, if we make it equal to the function, the function needs to have a command in it where it returns something back up to us. So rather than just have global variables up here, we're going to start passing things back and forth. And what are we going to pass up? Well, abgrades. So when we come down to abgrades, before we just calculated av, what's the problem here? It's not going to know what av is because av was not defined up here. And it is not defined in avgrade, so it's not going to know what it is. And we're going to use a different variable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define one. It's going to be float, and we're going to call it average. right? And then we're going to calculate average. Now, what's the problem? This is going to know what average is. But up here, it's not going to know because I've got local variables here, local variables here. So when I have chunks of code using local variables, this is the first way that I'm going to teach you how to pass a parameter back up. And so what I'm going to do down here, after I calculate average, I'm going to say return average. Okay, so what happens? This function av grades is going to declare a variable average and then it's going to calculate average and what's it going to do? It's going to pass it back up and then who's going to catch it? It's passed up to here so av is going to catch it. av is equal to this. Well what comes here? Whatever you return. What am I returning? I'm returning average. <clears throat> now you know how in the earlier lesson 32, I just put a void in front of here, a void in front of everything. So like if you define a function, you just define it as void. That's what you do if you're, if you're using global variables. But now I'm returning something. So what do I have to do? When I define the function, I've got to define what type of variable I am returning. What am I returning? I'm returning a float. So now this is still the command that defines this function, but it's not void. It's not empty. It's returning something. What's it returning? It's returning average. When average pops back up here, who catches average? The variable AV. Okay, so this avgrades will go down to avgrades. It sees it's going to create a float. Which float does it create? It creates average and returns that. Do you see it's sort of like passing the football? I pass it and you catch it. Okay, that's how this thing works. So let's see now if this thing will work. Let's hit it here. Oh, it's not happy. What happened? Oh, 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 okay. I see this print grades was using average as well. And so what we are going to do is we are just going to get rid of this. We're just going to get rid of that whole function. Does it make sense that when I did not declare av as a global variable, the other functions that wanted av were not happy? So we just got rid of that. Okay, I think everybody is happy. How many grades? I have three grades. And put the first grade, 97, 98. And you guys are most exceptional students, so I think you would probably get 100. So we're going to say 100. Your average is 98.33. Boom! Okay. Now let's just go back over this, and let's make sure that we understand what happened. Av is now a local variable known only to the void loop. Av is equal to whatever the function avgrades returns. When we go down to avgrades, now it's returning something, so it's not void. It's returning something. It's returning a float. So I define the function with float avgrades. And then I have to declare the variable that I'm going to calculate, which is average. <clears throat> I calculate average. And then what do I do? I return average. What does that do? That comes up here and puts that value here, which then is caught by AV, the local variable. Okay, does that make sense? Let's just start with another one just to understand how to do this return just, uh, just from scratch. I'm going to try to do just a really quick one. So let's come up here and say File New. 
And what I want to do is let's just create a function that will square, square a number. Okay. And let's use local variables. And so what I'm going to do here is we always need our trusty serial monitor. So serial dot begin 9600. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to define uh, X. So we're going to say, let's make it a float. Not a capital float, but float X. And then I'm going to get X from the user. How do I get something from a user? I ask, I wait, I read. And so I'm going to say serial.println. What number do you want to square? Like that. Let me make this big. So, what number do you want to square? Being diligent to put. Oh man, I messed up. Were you guys yelling at me up here? I didn't hit the shift. I'm, that's must have been where I hit the caps lock. Okay. So what number do you want to square? I ask. What do I do? I I wait. So I'll say while uh, serial dot available equal equal zero. What do I do? Absolutely nothing. So an open and a close clause. Open and close curly. I forget that it puts those closed in there for me. So I wait, and then what do I do? Read. So I am going to say x, which is what I'm waiting for, is equal to uh, serial dot parse float. So now I read x. Now what do I want to do? I want to say x2, which would be like x squared, is equal to what? We're going to call it a function x squared. Now let's think. I have a new variable here. I better define it. I'm using local variables, so I'm going to define it here. F-L-O-A-T, and then I'm going to say x squared. So now I've, just, I've declared my variables. And x2 is equal to x squared. And then serial.print. I'm going to put a series of things in here. OK, let's put in x, just the printout x. And then say serial.print. And then put in the word uh, squared is equal to. And then serial.println, and then put x2. So what should this do? What should this little thing of code do? It should ask you for a number, and then it should square it, and then it should say that that number squared is equal to, and then give you the answer. Now, what is the situation that we have here? Well, we haven't taught it what x squared is, so we've got to define the function. Where do we define the function, Lesson 32? We define it after after the void loop. That means after the whole void loop has ended. So now we're going to define it. Remember what we learned e earlier this lesson? Is it a void? No, it's not a void because I'm going to pass x squared back up to it. So what we're going to do is x squared is a float. So we're going to call the function a float function. And we're going to call it the x squared function. And then x squared is going to be a void. And then we're going to open curly. And then it should close the curly for me. There it is. Now, what does this do? It's going to have to know what uh, it's going to have to know what x is. So how is it going to know what x is? Hmm, x is a local variable, so I couldn't just say like float answer. I couldn't just say float answer because if I said float answer and then I say x is equal to, uh, if I say x, if I say answer is equal to x times x, what is the problem? Well, the problem is it doesn't know what x is because I made it a local variable. So I've got to get this x down here somewhere. How can I do that? Well, i got to pass it inside of here. So what am I going to pass? I'm going to pass x. 
Now, if I pass x, I've got to catch it here. I'm going to have to define it again, so I'm going to say float x. So this x here, this local variable x, is passed within these parentheses down to this x, which it's going to catch. But this x is different than that x, but it passes it. Now, answer is equal to x times x, this x times x. Now, what do I need to do? What I need to do now is I need to return what? I'm going to return x. Then that's going to come back into x2. You think this is going to work? How many mistakes did I make that I don't know about? Let's see. That wants to save it. Okay. Looks like it might be happy. What number do I want to square? Well, I want to square 2. 2 squared. Ow! 2 squared is equal to 2. What went wrong? Well, it's good sometimes to have a problem. I'll put a space in there. x2 is equal to x squared. And then I print x2. And then x squared, float answer. Oh, what did I return? Did you catch that? I returned x back. What did I want to return? Answer. Did you guys catch that? I hope you caught that. Okay, what number do I want to square 2? 2 squared is 4. Boom! I do want a space in there, so I'm going to put a space right there. Let's try that again. Do you see what we just did? We're starting to do modular programming. We're starting to do modular programming with local variables. What numbers do you want to square? 2.5. Okay. 2.5 squared is equal to 6.25. Hey, that looks good. All right. So what you can see is, is that once we start using local variables, we have to be mindful of passing values down to the function and then returning values back from the function. And so really what I wanted you to see today is the object of today's lesson was to see that if you're going to return something, when you define the function, you don't define it as void. You define it as a float or an int or a string or whatever you're returning. You define it as whatever you are returning. If you are just using global variables, you can make all of your functions called void, void, void. But if you're returning something, you need to define the function using the type of variable that you are going to, to return. And then you can see that we return answer, and answer was a float, so therefore this has to be a float. So really the purpose of this was to understand how to return something and then to have a variable up in the call that is just equal to what you call. And then doesn't this kind of start getting excellent? x squared is equal to x squared of what number of x, and then that's passed down. I'm going to do another video. Really, the purpose of this video was to learn how to just return something to use the return function. But in the next video, we're going to learn more about passing parameters to and from functions inside the parentheses. Does this make sense? I would love to hear from you guys. I would love it if you would leave a comment. Think about giving us a thumbs up subscribing to the channel, okay? Because I think this is really important stuff, and we've done a whole lot of lessons, and we're a little late to get to this. But this modular programming is really important. And starting in lesson number 32 is where we're really getting into this uh, modular pro programming. Lesson 35, I'll talk to you more about passing parameters back and forth. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.